Samplitude Pro X3, tempo smoothing. If you have a recording that wasn't recorded to a click track, it will more than likely have a fluctuating tempo. Tempo smoothing is a method whereby you tempo map such a recording, and then with the help of the Elastic Pro time stretch algorithm, you can smooth the tempo to create a constant BPM. The song will then conform to the MIDI grid. You can then record or program the MIDI parts, and these will be in perfect sync with the tempo smoothed audio. Samplitude doesn't officially support tempo smoothing, but I have worked out a way to do it. It involves a few steps to achieve this, however, so please bear with me. But ultimately, you will end up with a song which has a stable tempo. This technique will even allow you to change the tempo, and the audio will adapt to the new tempo. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the steps involved to achieve tempo smoothing in Samplitude Pro X3. The clip of music I've chosen will serve as a good example for this tutorial. I'll turn on the click. So obviously the click is nowhere near the tempo of the song. So that's the piece of music I'm going to tempo map and ultimately tempo smooth. Calculating the initial tempo. So the first thing I need to do is ascertain the initial project tempo based on the first bar of music. I've already placed the downbeat of the first bar of music at the beginning of the project at bar 1. So the first bar ends around here. I have Snap enabled, so I'm holding down Alt and left clicking and dragging a selection from left to right. Turn on loop and let's have a listen. That should do for what we need. So I need to calculate the tempo of that bar of music. I'm going to the menu item File, Project Properties, Snap and Grid Setup. Under the section Bar BPM, the signature is 4 4. The BPM is set to 120 and there are four beats in the selected range. I'm clicking Get BPM from Selected Range. Samplitude has calculated the tempo around 103.478. A dialog box is asking me if I want to activate tempo adjustment, but in this situation I don't, so I'm clicking no. So now the project tempo has been rounded at 103.5 BPM. Tempo mapping the song. So now I need to manually map the tempo of this song. I'm going to the menu entry, Edit, Tempo and I'm switching to Tempo Map Grid Fit Mode. I will also need to insert grid position markers. I've assigned a hotkey to do this, which is forward slash. If this key isn't mapped, you will need to assign your own shortcut. So, to reiterate, I've enabled Tempo Map Grid Fit Mode, and will be inserting grid position markers using the hotkey forward slash. I'm positioning the play cursor at bar 2 and pressing forward slash to insert the first grid marker. There's no need to insert a marker at bar 1 as that is accounted for by the project tempo. I'm now going to play the song and manually punch in the grid position markers to coincide with the downbeat of each bar. Here we go. So that's the markers inserted. Providing you're familiar with the song you're working on, punching in the markers accurately shouldn't be too difficult. I'm turning on the metronome to check how accurate the tempo mapping has been.
If you feel one of the markers isn't quite accurate, you can grab the marker and move it left or right. Then double click between the markers to enable a range to audition in loop mode. Check the next bar. That needs a very slight adjustment, so I'm grabbing the marker and moving it very slightly. This is probably the most arduous part of the procedure, but I quite enjoy doing it because you can fine tune the accuracy of the mapping by moving the relevant markers. Samplitude does have the remix agent which detects tempos, but I find the results not always that predictable. So I find that inserting markers manually is the best method at this moment. Anyway, the audio has been tempo mapped, although the fluctuating tempo remains. Showing the tempo track envelope. If you want a visual representation of the tempo changes, you can do this by enabling the tempo track. Go to the menu Automation, Tempo, and the tempo curve will be overlaid on the track. You can also choose to open this on an empty track if you wish. Just select the track and choose it again from the menu. The next part of this video will address my particular method of tempo smoothing. Splitting the objects at marker positions. The next thing I need to do is select the object. I'm turning off auto crossfade mode as I want clean cuts without crossfades. I'm going to edit, split, split objects at marker positions. So now the object is split into equal divisions of one bar. In fact, if I go to Edit, Tempo, and switch to Tempo Map BPM mode, the markers have turned red and are now displaying the varying tempo of the individual one bar slices. The next step is to remove all of the markers. I'm drawing a range from the beginning of the song to the last marker. Then I'm right clicking in the top half of the grid and marker bar and choosing Delete Markers in Range. Now when I delete these markers, you'll notice that gaps appear between the objects. This is happening because now the entire project is 103.5 BPM. The only slice which will actually be the right length is the first bar because we detected that to begin with. The other objects will need to be either lengthened or shortened using the time stretch algorithm. So I'm selecting all the objects. A quick way to do this is to double click in an empty space for that track and all objects will be selected. Next I'm going to the menu item Object, Quantize, Extended Audio Quantize, Remove Object Gaps. So all the object gaps have been removed, but a word of caution, the object gaps have been filled by time stretching, but it's possible some of the objects were too long. In this situation you would need to manually shorten the object end. To check this I will need to open the object manager. This can be done by opening it from the docker, or from the menu item view, manager, object manager. Hotkey Control plus Shift plus O. I'm going to drag it out of the docker. This displays each individual object in a list. All the objects are selected, they are all ticked in the manager. You'll notice that the object at bar 9 has a gap, whereas all the others have TS slash PS next to them, standing for Time Stretch Pitch Shift. So these are the objects which had their gaps filled. You can see that the object at bar 9 is longer. So I'm deselecting all of the objects by clicking in an empty space. 
then I'm ticking the object at bar 9 and that gets selected in the arranger. I'm zooming in, I'm moving the object on the right out of the way and you can see the object on the left is indeed longer. Next I'm switching to pitch shift time stretch mouse mode, then clicking on the bottom corner of the object and the object snaps to the correct length. I'm dragging the object back to its previous position. So the object and the object manager has updated to show PS slash TS. So if you're going to attempt this kind of maneuver, it's important to check in the object manager for any overlapping objects. Also, I can ignore the last object as that will be removed anyway. So all the necessary objects have been time stretched, except for the first one, which was used as the basis for the original tempo. I'm putting the object manager back in the dock. You can do this by control double clicking on the title bar. If you want to use the manager from within the dock, you can just grab the docker bar and resize it, or click on the tab to close it. Freezing the track and enabling musical tempo adjustment. So we have two final steps to complete this process. First I'm clicking on the small downward arrow to the right of the track name. Then I'm choosing Freeze Track. So now we have created a single object which will play back at the constant tempo of 103.5 BPM. But there's one final step. I'm going to double click on the object to open the object editor. From the Time Pitch tab, I'm ticking Use Musical Tempo Adjustment. Doing this primes the audio for any future tempo adjustment you may want to make. I'm switching back to Universal Mouse Mode to avoid any mistakes. We can now finally listen to the result of the track being tempo smoothed at 103.5 BPM. So that's fairly well mapped and pretty much in sync with the metronome. Now that musical tempo adjustment is enabled, I can change the tempo and the audio will follow. I'm going to start with 115 BPM. Let's try it at 90 BPM. Last of all, let's try at 165 BPM. The audio tends to smear with extreme amounts of tempo adjustment, but you get the idea. If you made it to the end of this video, congratulations. This method is definitely not a one-click solution. I would file it under for enthusiasts only, but hopefully regular users will find some aspects of this video useful. Anyway, until next time, all the best.